Bentham was an English philosopher and social reformer. He was born on February 15, 1748, in London, England, and died June of 1832. Bentham was born into a wealthy family, as he grew up reading his father's multi-volume history of England, as well as studying Latin by the age of three. He attended Westminster School, and by the age of 12, was sent to Oxford to attend college, where, where he received his bachelor's degree and master's degree. Although he studied to become a lawyer, he never really went through with it because he was displeased with the English legal code. His death took place in London as well, where he continued to write up until a month before his death. Before passing, he asked for his body to be used for preservation as an auto icon, as well as for dissection. Here you can see a virtual auto icon, an online website used to display the preserved body and icon that Bentham intended. While the actual body is preserved and kept in the University College London, people from around the world can use this site to see and study his icon. Bentham established a philosophy that he called utilitarianism, which was the principle of utility. Utilitarianism recognizes the fundamental role of pleasure and pain in human conduct. This relates good with the pleasurable and bad or evil with the painfulness. Pleasure is the good that humans seek out. Utilitarianism is also a eudemonism which states that the view of happiness is the ultimate end of human life. In hindsight, utilitarianism approves or disapproves actions done by humans according to the amount of happiness that the actions and outcome bring with it. The action is judged by its consequence. Bentham believed that nature gave people two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. By sovereign, he means independent factors of authority, given the idea that both pain and pleasure guide all activity of human nature, including their outcomes. All human beings seek out not only pleasure, but the absence of pain. Bentham also clearly paid much more attention in his studies to not the quality of pleasure received from actions, but rather the amount of pleasure that he received. According to Jeremy Bentham and other utilitarians, it is possible for pleasure to be sought out of doing the right thing from a bad motive. Bentham has quoted Aristotle in saying that it is pleasure which makes us do what is base, and pain which makes us abstain from doing what is noble. Utilitarianism gives pleasure and pain the ability to determine what humans ought to do, and what humans shall do. Basically, our human conduct and actions are not guided or defined from ideas or feelings. Likewise, the standard of right and wrong is dependent on these values. What is right increases the amount of pleasure already brought on by these values, and what is wrong can decrease the amount of pleasure brought on. So, our actions to seek pleasure aren't necessarily done to be right or wrong, yet being right or wrong can alter the amount of pleasure in the outcome. Being right can give satisfaction, which brings pleasure, but being right isn't the only goal from the beginning. Now we will look at something called hedonic parameters, which helps us measure the value of the pleasure and pain being received during an action. As you can see, a pleasure by itself is measured in dimensions. To a single person, factors that take effect include intensity, or how strong it is, duration, or how long it lasts, certainty, or how sure you were of it, and propinquity, or how soon it came. These same factors could be applied to measuring pain as well. Other factors to be considered include fecundity, or how much more pleasure can be achieved, extent, or how many people are affected, as well as purity, or how free from pain or pleasure you receive after. Opposition to Egoism Utilitarianism is a theory opposite to egoism, which is another theory that holds the view that a person should complete any actions in their own self-interest, 
even at the expense to others. Although both utilitarianism and egoism both have a focus on the good outcomes of an action, egoism focuses on more ethical actions rather than the moral outlook utilitarianism gives. The largest difference between the two is the focus each gives on the individual. Utilitarianism expresses that as long as pleasure is achieved, the action was good. However, egoism expresses that the outcome should benefit others as well. In egoism, the individual is more important as well, which is why it is more important to act upon self-interest. Utilitarianism has also had many effects on other fields. Utilitarians have always generally supported democracy. This is likely because they believe the individual is the best judge of their own country's actions. Also, they believe in the social change through more peaceful political processes. Utilitarianism also has been widespread in law. Holding its own theory of the justification of punishment, it often goes against another theory, the retributive. We'll start with the utilitarian theory of justification of punishment. It contains three parts. The first being incapacitation. Putting someone in prison can limit their further criminal activity. The second, rehabilitation, is the criminal is taught that crime is not worth it. Last, it deterrence. When a criminal is punished and placed in prison, others can learn from their mistakes. The retributive theory of justification for punishment is known as a priori and isn't affected by experiences in general. Basically, it says that a punishment received by a criminal should fit the crime committed. They deserve what they did. John Stuart Mill, a British philosopher in the 1800s, also contributed to utilitarianism. In his book, Utilitarianism, he gives the philosophy a defense in ethics. He says that utility is a pleasure itself, as well as the absence of pain. He even refers to it as the greatest happiness principle. Humans are always trying to achieve higher in life, and are never quite satisfied with the base of a faculty. He also agrees with Bentham in that utilitarianism takes account in not just quantity, but the quality of the pleasure received as well. Mill also makes it clear that there are higher and lower quality pleasures. Even if a very high quality pleasure, which took use of the hedonic parameter chart from earlier, was accompanied by other struggles or discomfort, people would still trade in for their lower quality pleasure. Utilitarianism has received criticism in the past. This can be particularly about lying. Utilitarianism has stated that lying is bad. However, it is argued that, although widespread lying is bad, an occasional lie to save oneself from embarrassment or trouble can be a good thing. Another common misconception is that utilitarianism only accounts for happiness associated with great numbers of people or usefulness, which is untrue. Bentham himself said that utilitarianism applies to all happiness and pleasure, no matter who it is for. To conclude, let's summarize what we've gone over. To start, Jeremy Bentham was an English philosopher and social reformer. He grew up in a wealthy family and studied law, but was very displeased with the British law system. In return, he developed his own philosophy, utilitarianism. This basically recognized the fundamental role of pleasure and pain in human conduct, meaning utilitarianism approves or disapproves actions done by human according to the amount of happiness that the actions and outcome bring with it.